12 this morning, and uh, I am glad that you are here looking forward uh, to just a few moments this morning, and uh, last week we spent some time looking at our identity in Christ, and uh, we were reminded that we can take advantage of what God has uh, uh, given to us and has built for us, but before that, we must understand who we are in Christ. And so last week, I reminded you of some, some simple yet profound truths, such as I'm loved by the Father, right? I, I'm forgiven at a steep price. I was, I was justified and declared innocent. I'm, I'm at peace with God. I'm clothed with the righteousness of God. I'm, I'm made new in Christ. And because of all of that, I am a child of of God, and that's who we are in Christ. And so, while uh, God is obviously the great I am, the Bible says, before Abraham was, I am. But listen to me, listen to me. You are in Christ a child of God. That's your identity. He loved you, He gave Himself for you, and He has a plan and a purpose in your life. And so, I told you, I'm starting the series uh, entitled. I will, and we're going to be looking at uh, what we should be doing as children of God, as members of uh, the body of Christ, but then specifically, and just bringing it specifically to us, uh, how we as members of this local church specifically uh, should operate. God's design uh, for His bride is that we operate in specific and uh, distinct local church bodies. God organized local churches uh, he set the pattern that we're to operate in local churches. And while I'm thankful for everyone that uh, names the name of Christ, I am extremely thankful for this local church. Amen. All right? Not because we're the only church in the world. All right? We uh, are not the only church in the United States or Florida or Pinellas County or Largo. We are not the only church. But we are this church. And my feeling is that we are a local church. We're accountable to God. And we're accountable to each other with how we treat that opportunity. That opportunity. And so as we look at how a healthy, uh, thriving local church should operate, we're going to see how uh, really a healthy, thriving Christian should operate. Because the local church is nothing more than an assembling together, a collective of the individual Christian. And so this morning I'm going to challenge you uh, with uh, what we as uh, children of God, how we as uh, healthy, uh, thriving Christians uh, should operate. The, the local church is made up of individual uh, Christians. I, I believe it's imperative that we do so because... We, we need to lay some framework of how we as believers uh, ought to operate. So this morning, I'm going to look specifically at this. With what attitude should we operate? With what attitude uh, should we operate? Can I, can I tell you this? Our attitude matters. Our attitude matters. The attitude with which you approach church matters. The attitude with which you approach church matters. So let me ask you the question. What do you want out of church? What do you want out of church? What are you looking for? What are you looking for? Now I say that not to say I want to know what you're looking for so that I can cave in and cater to what you specifically want. Because I'm just going to be honest. There are, I think, 120 people in the church this morning. And to be very honest, each one of you is wired completely differently. So I'm just going to tell you, just so we can be straightforward and honest with each other, I cannot build uh, the perfect church for you because all of you are different. And to be honest, my goal is not to build a church for you anyway. It's to build a church for Him. Amen. All right? And so a lot of times we go to churches and we struggle because, oh, that church just isn't for me. And that church just... I, I get where people are coming from, but I'm just going to challenge your thinking a little bit. Church isn't about you. Church isn't per se for you. We gather together in community with one another. Why? To bring glory to God. So last Sunday night, <coughs> I passed out a survey, and it, it was extremely helpful uh, to get your feedback. But my, my motivation, I'm just going to be honest with you, it wasn't specifically uh, to ask you what you want 
uh, out of church. So I ask you, okay, give me some strengths. What do you view as the strengths of the church? What do you view as some things that uh, maybe could use some work, things like that? And my goal there wasn't specifically to know uh, how to change things around here uh, to be what you want it to be. My goal is to challenge you to be a part of making it happen. My goal is to challenge you to be a part of making it happen. And so my heart, my heart, is that your, your view of the local church would go from being I want to I will. I, I, I want to uh, I will. What, what are you saying? I, I had some people that wrote down uh, this area of the church that needs some attention. Great. You want that to be the case. Will you be a part of making it happen? Well, I just, I wish that there was more for, insert whatever here, will you be a part of making that happen? Well, this part of our church, to be, to be very honest, it's, it's it could you, good, will you be a part of, of strengthening it? Because yeah, here's my goal, here's my goal. I, I, I hope you know this from being here the little time that you've been here, the long time that you've been here. I hope that you understand that we don't just uh, come and worship together because I get bored on Sunday mornings. Or that I have nothing to do on Sunday night or Wednesday night or Thursday morning or throughout the week. It's not that we do this because uh, just Jonathan needs a profession. I can go do something else. <laughs> All right. The reason we do this is believe, believe, man. And, and I was looking at the core that started three years ago, and I, I, I think I think we only have like 15 people left from that original, that first meeting here at New Life. Like 15 people are left, and look around. Everybody else has, has come since then. It's amazing to see. But we're all here because we believe that God wanted a local church in this community to reach out and evangelize this community, to love them to Jesus. And, and we're here for that reason. We're not here just to... To rub shoulders and be buddy buddy and, and put on a fake smile. We're here because God wants to do something in this community. And you say by your attendance here that you want to be a part of that. Amen? Amen. Amen. So not I want, but I I will. I will. I'll be a part of making this local body be what I believe Christ wants us to be. I will be a part of loving our community. I will be a part of spreading the gospel to our community. How? Over the next five weeks, we're going to take a look at five, five things. Number one, how, how I will worship with my local church. Fellowship. Fellowship. Second, secondly, I'll grow with my local church. Discipleship. That idea of always growing. I'll give with my local church my time, my talent, my treasure, a stewardship of what God's given me. I'll serve with my local church service. And then lastly, I'll go with my local church. You say, Jonathan, why does this matter? Because unless we know who we are and what we're to do, we just stumble and fumble our way through life. Are you, are you with me? Right. And so I want to clearly, just at the beginning of this year, I want, to, I want to clearly define, listen, who we are. And we did that last week. Who we are in Christ. But then for the next five weeks, I want to uh, clearly outline who we are to be as followers of Christ. And then at the end of that five weeks, we're going to have a banquet. We're going to have a banquet. I'm going to challenge you to take the I will commitment. To take the I will commitment. And to say, I will be a part of this local church. I will be a part of reaching this community for Jesus. Are you following what I'm saying? You say, well, Jonathan, why does it matter? Look, look at me, look at me. Our community desperately needs Jesus. It needs it. We need fewer drug houses in this community. Listen to me. I can take you within a block to three houses that sell drugs of our church. And they need Jesus. And they need less drugs. I, I weary at seeing the police department over here looking for people, right? But more than we need to get rid of crime, we need to give them Jesus. Amen. Are you listening to me? Hey, we drive down this road. Listen to me. Look at me. Look at me. We drive down this road. Some of the houses, we think they're not taken care of, right? We wish they'd clean up a little bit. We wish there wasn't trash left out everywhere, right? Hey, more than our community needs a facelift, 
It needs Jesus. Amen. Amen. It needs Jesus. And we are here because we believe that. So what are we going to do about it? I want change to happen. Okay, will you be part of the change? Will you be part of it? So I want you to take your Bible to 1 Corinthians this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. And let's look at verse number 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12. By the way, if you live in one of the houses in this community to sell drugs, I am so thankful you're here. Please stop selling drugs. <laughs> I love you, and I love this community, and I, I, I sat down with Michael. Michael's back there. Michael lives a couple streets over, and me, Michael and I sat down. We just started pointing out houses, and he's like, yep, 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 yep. He's lived here for years and years and years. I asked, I asked Michael, I said, so why, why did you start coming to the church? And he said, well, I saw how you loved on the community. I saw how you loved on the community, and I wanted to be a part of that. Hey, the community needs Jesus. Are Amen. you hearing me? Amen. By the way, your family needs Jesus. Jesus, yeah. your co-worker needs... Yeah. All right, we're on the same track there. Good, 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 good. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 12. We're looking at how the body of Christ is to operate. Now we understand that everyone that names the name of Christ is a part of the, the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, if you will. But in this setting, we're looking at the body of Christ as it functions in distinct uh, separate uh, local church bodies, how God organizes the local church body together. Uh, look at verse number 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and we've all been made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not, what's the word? One member, but, next word, many. If the foot shall say, oh, because I'm not of the hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Or if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were, the, were an eye, where were the hearing? And if the whole were hearing, where were the, what? Smelling. But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him, if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And I cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again to the head, the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more, those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. What, what is he saying here? He's saying everybody plays a part, and the parts uh, that you look at is maybe not being as important. They are, what does it say there? It says necessary. Those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness, for our comely parts have no need. But God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no what schism in the body, but that the members should have the, look at this, the same care one for another. We're to look after one another equally. And then verse 26, whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. One member be honored. All the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Here's my goal, and I'm going to just very clearly state this so you understand. My goal is to take the, the people that are here today and to organize ourselves into a functioning local church body. Say, Jonathan, what are you talking about? We're three years old. We've got a bunch of members, and we, we've, we're purchasing our building, and we're, we're functional. This is one of the more functional church has, uh, churches I've ever been to. No, 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 listen to me. Our goal ought to be to work together cohesively, corporately, to accomplish much for the kingdom of God. Amen. And listen to me. We have some work to do. We have some work to do. Just because, look at me. Just because most of the seats in this room are filled does not mean that we have arrived. Right. Okay? And so my heart for the next five weeks, and the reason we're starting off this year with this series is this. I want you to judge yourself, engage yourself, as it pertains to, number one, your walk with God, right? And then, number two, your walk with this local church body. All right? My heart is for you to examine... How do I fit? Where do I fit in? And just to set you at ease and put your mind at rest. Look at me, look at me, look at me. You fit. You belong. There's a role for you to play. What is it? 
What is it? All right? So our attitude. Let's pray, and we're going to look at our attitude in serving. Father, we love you. We praise you for your goodness. I pray that you'd be with us this morning. I pray that you'd speak to our hearts. God, we, we understand completely that you are the agent of change here. And so, Father, I pray that you'd work. I pray that your spirit would work. I pray that your word would not come, uh, come back void, but, Father, that you'd accomplish everything that you set it out to do. I pray that we'd be open and receptive and that we'd listen and have hearts to hear. We thank you for who you are. Thank you for Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So our attitude, our attitude toward certain things. As we look at the next five weeks, I'm going to uh, go into fellowship and stewardship, discipleship, all of these things. And they're all important. But the attitude in which we approach all of those things is imperative. So number one, I, I would hope that you would say this morning, I will have a unifying attitude. I'll have a unifying attitude. If you want to turn in your Bibles to Ephesians 4, you can. Or look up on the screen there, Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verse number 1. I, Paul speaking, therefore, uh, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Verse number 2, with all lowliness and meekness, with longsuffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring. You ready for this? Endeavoring uh, to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of Peace. Just as with any family, our church family has to learn to put each other's needs before our own. If we are going to be a healthy, look at me, if we're going to be a healthy, a thriving church body, we've got to learn to put each other's needs before our own. How does that happen? It happens as individual Christians. Will you elevate the needs of another before your own? If you approach church as what can I get out of it, you're going to be constantly disappointed. Right. Now, I, 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 my heart is to help you. If you approach church as what can I get out of it, you're constantly going to be disappointed. Right. If you approach church as, well, I hope this person, this person, this person talks to me. If all five of those people don't talk to me, then my day at church wasn't good. You're just not going to enjoy church. You, you hear me? If there's a Sunday I do not talk to you, it's not because I don't love you. It's because something came up. I try, and you know, and you know that I try to speak to every one of you when you're here. But if I don't, I still love you. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. By the way, you can always come up to me. You can always walk up to me. What are you saying? I'm saying sometimes we need to get our eyes off ourselves, and we need to look at promoting the unity. You ready for this? The unity of the body. Tom Rainer said this, he said, The health of any group is tied to its unity. It's true for sports teams, it's true for businesses, it's true for families, it's true for churches. Rather than waiting, you ready? Waiting for everything to fall in play, why don't you be an agent of unity? Agent of unity. Hey, look at me. We are all here for the same purpose. What's the purpose? You ready? Glorify God in all that we do. How do we do that? By keeping the gospel central and reaching people for Jesus. Right? The, uh, our core principles that we've developed this year, if you've not heard them yet, you've never been to a Wednesday, Sunday night service where we've talked about them, uh, we're going to go over them after that five weeks in that banquet. We'll go over them together. But number one of our core principles, who we are, is we are going to keep the gospel central to all that we do. Can I tell you what I place a tremendous value on in this church? Unity. Unity. We are all on the same Team. You want to hear the team? New Life Baptist Church. Nope. <laughs> Pastor Jonathan's team. Nope. We're on the Lord's side. Listen, listen. Our Savior has redeemed us. He's called us Amen. to impact people with the gospel. And we're on Team Jesus. Amen. Team Jesus. What are you saying? I'm saying I'm going to fight for the unity of the body. I'm saying I'm going to fight for the unity of the body. So what are you saying? I'm saying gossiping and all that, that. That's not been a part of who we are, and it's not going to become part of who we are. That's why we love this church, right? We're not going to let that be named among us, right? Well, I just I think so-and-so is a weak link. Well, why don't you go encourage them? Why don't you go love them? Why don't you go help them? Why don't you go pull them aside and say, hey, can I pray for you? Are you following what I'm saying? By the way, it's hard to have animosity towards somebody that you're praying for. Yeah. I have a unifying attitude. Secondly, 
Secondly, and I only have four points. We're halfway through, guys. I have a sacrificial attitude. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 8 says this, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men, being found in fashion as a man. He was the word he humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. When we have an attitude of sacrifice, we're acting the most like Christ. Christ was a revolutionary because he sacrificed himself. It wasn't only when he sacrificed himself on the cross. Say, so what are you talking about? You understand that throughout Christ's life, he sacrificed his own desires? Right. Amen. All right, come on. You're, you're asleep. I got to help you here. He sacrificed his own desire. He sacrificed his own ambition. He sacrificed. Are you following what I'm saying? Listen to me. We never saw Jesus expressing his rights. Sorry. Didn't happen. But guess what happens in church? Oftentimes, oftentimes, we get caught up in the trap of, well, I deserve to fill this way. I, I, de I deserve. Hey, listen. They've wounded me, they have hurt me. They are wrong. Are you following me? It's sacrificial. Sacrificial. What does it mean sacrificing your rights? When I come here, my expectation, my expectation is not to, uh, to come into this place and for everybody to stoke my ego. My expectation is to come to this place and find somebody else that needs love and love on. My expectation is to encourage. My expectation, listen to me, is to worship God, glorify Him. My expectation is that while I'm here and throughout the week that my spirit is such that God looks upon that with favor, right? A sacrificial attitude. How can I, how can I sacrifice my rights? How can I sacrifice my personal desires? How can I sacrifice my own ambition? How can I sacrifice my treasure? How can I sacrifice my time? Hey, listen, giving, humbling. Why? Because that's how our Savior was. Amen. You follow me? Our attitude ought to be one of sacrifice. It ought to be one of unification. Let me give you thirdly here. It's got to be one of prayer. It's got to be one of prayer. Colossians 1, 9 and 10 says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, desire that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of of God. What are you saying? I'm saying everything we do ought to be, listen to me, you ready? Marinated in prayer. Amen. Marinated in prayer. I was going to say bathed, bathed in prayer, but baths are shorter. You marinate for a minute, right? Yeah. Marinated in prayer. I, I'm, saying, I'm saying before you confront somebody, you ought to pray about that thing. Before you judge somebody, you better pray about that thing. Before you write somebody off, why don't you pray about that thing? All right, listen to me. Before you get cross with somebody, why don't you pray about that thing? Are, are you following what I'm saying? By the way, before you come to church, you ought to pray about that thing. Amen. Well, what are you talking about? Hey, God, I'm headed to church. I'm being obedient to, to not forsake the assembling of myself together. But the reason I'm doing it is I want to be a blessing to somebody. I want to worship you and I want to hear from you. Right? God, would you speak to me? What, what are you talking about? I'm talking about marinating your life in prayer. I'm talking about spending time with the Savior. Here's what I don't want us to do. Here's what I don't want us to do. I don't want us to become a church where we just fly by the seat of our pants and we do what sounds good and feels good at the moment and we just kind of blow around. I want us to bathe and marinate and rub prayer all over us. Listen to me. I want us, listen to me. I want everything that we do to be seasoned with prayer. Why? Because we want the heart of God in everything that we do. Listen. We're not trying to build a big church. We're trying to build people. I want you to listen to what I'm saying. I'm not trying to build a big church. When I started this thing, I wanted to build a big church, Stephen. I, I'm just telling you. When I started this thing, I wanted to see what we could do over here. I, re I really did. And for the first several months, I thought to myself, and I gauged the success of what was going on here based on how many of you had your bottoms in the pew. I did. I said, it was a good day because 40 of you showed up. And when there were 20, oh, that was a bad day. Seriously. 
And God started working on my heart and beating me up and saying, what are you trying to do? I build the church, you build people. So listen to me, our goal here is transition. Our goal is transition. We're going to build people and God will build His church. Right. Amen. Amen. By the way, I have no desire for us to ever be a mega church. Alright, hear what I'm saying. Listen to me. I don't ever want us to run a thousand people. You say, well, you're capping out God. No, no, here's what I want. As we grow and as we get to a point where I start to not know your names and not know who you are and I can't come over and have coffee with you and I can't watch a ball game with you and I can't minister to you because there's too many of you, then we're going to start another church. I'm just, because we don't need new life campuses all over the world. We need to be effective here. And when we get to a point where we grow to the point we can't, hey, we're going to start another church. Why? Because we need to build people. And you can't build people if you don't know who they are. Are you listening to me? Sacrificial, prayerful. What are you saying? I'm saying I want God, God to lead and to guide our steps. When we build, when we remodel, when we renovate, when we do anything we do, I can tell you, I, I, listen to me, I'm praying about that thing. I'm asking you to pray about that thing. I, we want the hand of God in everything that we do here. All right, so our attitude is a prayerful attitude. That's three. We're on the last point. Last point, you ready? Number four. I have a joyful attitude. I have a joyful attitude. Philippians 4, 4 through 7 says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Uh, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Some of you, you struggle to not come to church and be miserable because you're used to going to church and being critical of everything that's wrong. And, and, and let me just say, I, I get why. I get why. Because a lot of times, a lot of times, church and fellowship and things like that can be unhealthy because we tend to focus on ourselves. Right? A lot of churches tend to focus on building themselves and they're not so concerned about Jesus as they are building, you insert whatever church name here. Right? So, so I'm just telling you, I'm not all about new life. I'm, I'm proud to be a member of new life. I'm thankful to pastor her. I'm thankful for each and every one of you. But my goal is not to make much of new life, it's to make much of Jesus. Right? And I know a lot of you came from ministries or you've been around ministries where you've seen the negative and you've seen the, the flaws and the corruption. And I'll not be so naive to say that that's not there. I get it. I understand. All right? But that doesn't mean that you have to be the cynic. And that doesn't mean you have to be the critic. And that doesn't mean you have to go to church and poke holes and everything. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Why don't you try this? Why don't you try approaching everything you do with joy? Amen. Yeah. Why don't you try approaching everything that you do with joy? Hey, I don't need somebody else to say it can't be done. I want to hear you say, hey, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Amen. Hey, look at me. We are victorious. Jesus died on the cross. He forgave us of our sins. Listen, we have victory in Jesus. Listen to me. We've won. Amen. Amen. We can have joy about that. It, here, here's what I'll tell you. I'll never prom I won't promise you that I'll never make a mistake. I'll not ever be that naive. I'll not promise you that I won't fail. But what I can tell you, what I can tell you is right now the Lord's being glorified in this place and I want to keep it that way. Amen. Amen. Right now we're impacting our community with the gospel and I want to keep it that way. Amen. Amen. How does that happen? Well, it happens if we're unified and it happens if we're sacrificial. And it happens if we're prayerful. And it happens if we're joyful. Amen. Heard a story about a man who went to see the doctor. He said, Doctor, everywhere I touch seems to hurt. Something's seriously wrong with me. Every time I touch my nose, I hurt. Touch my foot and I hurt. Press my stomach right next to my belly button. That hurts. What is wrong with me? So the doctor organizes an x-ray and says, I think I found the reason why everything you touch hurt. He said, well, what is it? He said, your body's fine, but your finger's broken. <laughs> <laughs> now, when we started this message, we looked at 1 Corinthians 12, and we likened the church to what? A body. Now, here's what I think happens in church a lot of times. I think we're constantly looking at the arm and the elbow and everything, and we're saying something's wrong with the elbow. 
Something's wrong with the head. Something's wrong with the arm. Oh, the tongue's messed up, right? Oh, there goes the foot again. Ever think it might be the finger? It might be you. If everybody in church you have a problem with, you might be the problem. Right. <laughs> Look at me. That was silly. For those of you that don't know, that was a mic drop moment. <laughs> We're all members of one body. Okay? If you're constantly having a problem with everybody else, you might be the problem. Right. And I'd encourage you to examine that today. Why? Because unity matters. Amen. And if you're not on board, get on board. It's a good thing happening. You say, well, this church, here goes again. I've heard this one before. Everything's right. This church is going to do everything right. This is, this is the solution to all the church problems. No, no, no. We're broken, we're imperfect, we're flawed, we make mistakes, we mess up. That's right. Amen. But we love Jesus. And we're going to make much of Him. And if you're on the fringe looking from the outside in, you ought to jump in because it's good. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> I read this and I liked it. This is my church. It's composed of people just like me. It'll be friendly if I am. It'll do great work if I work. It'll make generous gifts to many causes if I'm generous. It'll bring people into its fellowship if I bring them. Its seats will be filled if I fill them. It'll be a church of loyalty, of love, of faith, and of service if I, who make it what it is, am filled with these things. Therefore, with God's help, I'm going to dedicate myself to the task of being all these things I want my church to be. So the question this morning, what do you want new life to be? I'm not going to change the way I preach for you. I'm not going to change our music for you. I'm not listen to me. We're not going to start doing whatever. Because, we're not going to have disco Sunday just because you want to have disco Sunday. <laughs> By the way, I've never heard of a church doing this. Maybe we should do it because nobody else does it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying change who we are. I'm not saying change our doctrine. We're not going to move away from the truth of the gospel. We're never going to listen to me. And I'll fight on that one. We'll, we'll defend that faith. Right. But what I'm saying is this church largely is what you make it to be. I can, I can, I can shepherd and I can dream and I can steer. I, uh, I think about this place all the time. I really do. I love her. I love you. I don't care too much for this building. It kind of gets... A little frustrated sometimes. We had to have the plumber out yesterday to fix the toilet that's not working again for the third time in the last two months. And I keep getting hung on the panel wall back there. I keep catching on the wall, like stuff sticking out, and I catch on it. It, it gets frustrating sometimes. But I love you. And I love this church. I love what God's done in three years here. Amen. I really do. This is abnormal. But... I believe God wants to do more. It's not about people. It's not about increasing numbers. It, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. It is about people. It's not about increasing numbers. It, it's about building people up. There, there are people that need help with their marriage. Amen. There, need, there are people that need your help uh, with their family. They need you to pray with them, weep with them, love with them. There are people all over this community like Doug that just need Jesus, man. Good to see you, Doug. How you doing, bud? Some people just need Jesus. Hey, look, I'm, I'm looking through this room at those of you who got saved over the last few years here. There's Jim, and there's Nicole, and there's Jessica. And are you, there's just people who need Jesus. And if we'll focus, listen to me, if we'll focus on reaching people, God will build this church. Amen. How do we do it? We do it with the attitude of prayer, the attitude of sacrifice, attitude of unity, and the attitude of joy. In closing, your attitude largely determines your effectiveness. If you're joyful, you'll likely be an encouragement. <coughs> if you're angry, you're most likely going to be critical. So I said in the beginning that we're a local church and we're, we're accountable to God and one another with how we treat that opportunity. So I want to expound on that a bit. You ready? You, if you're here this morning, you chose to be here. It's your choice. I didn't come to any of your houses this morning, twist your arm and put you in the car. I'd like to sometimes. I didn't. I'm not going to make you be a part of this church. I couldn't if I tried. 
But if you've chosen to be a part of this church body, can I encourage you to own that choice? So I want to ask you, I want to ask you just a couple questions. You ready? How is this church stronger because of you? If you weren't a part of this church, what would change? I don't say that because I want you to leave. I hope that everybody here this week is here next week. <coughs> but what I'm asking you to do is I'm asking you to be part of the body. Listen, if you call this place home, if, you, if you're a member of this church, this is your family. It's your family. And your family needs you. If you're part of this family, this community needs us. So if you're on the outside looking in, can I encourage you to get in? If you're sitting on the fringe and you're just kind of here, stay in a country club. <laughs> stay in a country club. We're about reaching people for Jesus. I want you to be a part of that. So if you're just uh, if you're just observing, get off the sideline, get in the game. Say, well, I've never played before. We'll teach you. We'll teach you. Why? Because souls are in the balance. Souls are in the balance. And if you don't go, who does? I can't go to Siberia, but I can help Vladimir. Right? I can't reach everybody, but we together can reach a whole lot more. Are you following what I'm saying? And I want to. I want to. Because that's the one thing God's told us to do. So I'm about taking that serious. And I wonder if you will also. Would you stand to your feet with your heads bowed, your eyes closed? I'm just going to be very transparent in the invitation this morning. If this is a place that you consider your church home, can I encourage you to examine how you're contributing? Can I encourage you to examine how this church is stronger because of you? Can I encourage you to examine how this church would look if you weren't here? If you don't like what you see there, change it. Why? You ready? Look at me real quick. I told you to bow your heads and close your eyes, but look at me real fast. Why do we change it? Because we've been loved, and therefore we love others. Because we've been loved, because we are in Christ, we love others. You follow what I'm saying? So here's what we're going to do this morning. The invitation is super, super simple. Uh, number one, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, can I encourage you to care enough about that? Can I encourage you to care, care enough about that that today you talk to somebody about that and you make him your savior today. After the church, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be up after the service. I'm going to stand up here. Actually, I'll go out to the front. Stephen will be out at the front. We'll have some other guys out here. If you want to talk to somebody about the gospel, you want to talk to somebody about placing your faith in Christ and becoming part of the body of Christ, hey, we'll be out there. Pull us aside. There's nobody I'd rather talk to in this place than you. Okay? But if you're saved and you know Christ is your savior and you consider this your church, can I encourage you? We're going to spend some time, and here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I don't always do this, but what I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to ask you to step out from where you are, come to the altar, turn around in your seat, pray there, pray with somebody. But I'm going to encourage you, ask the Lord, God, how am I strengthening this body? How do you want to work in this body through me? And can I encourage you, if this is your church, make it your church. Because we are who we are, we will, we will, we will do something for the glory of God. All right? So I'm going to pray, and I'm going to ask you to step out from where you are. Just turn around and pray where you are. I don't always do that, but hey, let's be unified in our response today, right? God, speak through us. Work through us. Use us for your glory. Father, we love you. We praise you for who you are. I ask that you'd work in our hearts, work in our midst. I pray that you'd accomplish big things through our, our work here in this community. But Father, before we look at all the work that we'll do, would you help our attitudes to be right? Would you challenge us, help each one of us to examine this morning how we're doing with that? God, I bring you, I give you glory for that. I thank you for who you are. Thank you for Jesus. I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you step out from where you are? Maybe turn around in your seat, but let's do business with God. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Spend some time with the Lord this morning.